In the 1950s, Korea was one of the poorest countries in the world. This was due to 36 years of Japanese colonial rule, followed by the division of the Korean Peninsula with the Korean War. Korea is now the 11th largest economy in the world and an information technology powerhouse. Indeed, Korea has accomplished one of the most astounding developments in the world. What is the driving force behind this spectacular growth? International experts pinpoint Korea's education system as one of the driving forces. For a poor agrarian-based country with scarce natural resources, human resources were the only resource Korea could mobilize to overcome its poverty. Cultivating its valuable human resources through education contributed to the country's spectacular industrial growth. Korean industries are moving toward sophisticated value-added products like semiconductors, heavy machinery, and petrochemical items. Colleges and universities adapt to this trend by providing quality human resources equipped with in-depth knowledge and skills. Economic success contributed to the country's democratization and political stability. With that as a base, Korea has grown into a country of freedom and diversity. Its cultural influence is sweeping across Asia as seen from the popularity of its music, dance, and movies. A boom known as the Korean wave or Hallyu in Korea. Primary and secondary school education are already universalized with more than 82% of high school graduates going on to receive higher education. Korea spends 8.2% of its GDP in education, more than the average of other OECD countries. Obviously the state uh, made really large investments um, and I think it made the, the right kind of investments. A, a lot of developing countries uh, build universities first uh, or, or uni you know, educational facilities for middle class or well-to-do elites. Uh, but Korea focused on basic primary and secondary education because you needed an industrial labor force that had the skills to uh, industrialize. And so I think it made the right strategic decisions. In Tim's 2003, Eighth grade Korean students came in second and third in mathematics and science, respectively. In another survey, PISA 2003, Korean students aged 15 were placed in the highest scoring group in mathematics, reading, science, and problem solving. OECD pointed out that Korean education has achieved both high quality and high equity. 2000, 2003 has shown uh, that Korean uh, students, 15-year-olds, have been uh, very good in uh, problem solving. Um, they have been best equipped. Um, and together with Finland, uh, Korea has had very high scores. Korea's R&D expenditures have shown a sharp increase, reaching almost 2.9% of GDP in 2004. Research funds are channeled to universities through special funded projects such as Brain Korea 21 and New University for Regional Innovation. As a result, the number of research papers in the Science Citation Index of Korea has increased remarkably. What enabled Korea's education system to grow? First, Koreans view education as the most important factor for the individual and society, a perception deeply rooted in the traditional Confucian culture. In the past, Korea was a Confucian nation managed by capable and talented people with a strong sense of morals. Education was a key factor in the selection of these people. Excelling in these selective exams was the way to obtain respect, social status and wealth. That deeply ingrained Confucian perception of education continues to fuel a strong desire for education in Korean society today. Second, the government plays a key role in response to the people's demand for education 
and the need for an educated labor force to power economic growth. The government gives top priority to education. They implemented a public educational system for everyone, including girls. The government financed this huge educational expenditure through various national tax revenues. As a result, Korea's education system expanded rapidly into a strong central system to supervise the enlargement of educational facilities, upgrading of the quality of teachers, and reform of the national curriculum. Third, many private schools and universities were set up with donations from philanthropists and patriotic organizations. Now, a quarter of middle schools, half of high schools, and three quarters of colleges and universities are private. This phenomenon is not seen in other countries. Parents also pay a substantial sum of money for private education, including home tutoring. Their zeal for their children's education is fueled by the knowledge of economic gains from educational investment. What I am especially interested in is the planning and the effort and the uh, consistency and the stability that lies beneath the success that created it. And that is the message that other countries, I think, other less developed countries need to get uh, from Korea. And I think it is, um, this just didn't happen. It didn't fall out of the sky. It happened because generations of leaders made a choice and stayed with the choice. However, this rapid development gave rise to some serious problems. First is the highly competitive student life, often described metaphorically as exam hell. Competition is good and productive, if not taken to extremes. However, the intense competition among students to enter good schools has created an unhappy school life for students, including low self-esteem and antisocial behavior. These are not good for building a foundation for lifelong learning. Usually, parents have to spend a huge sum of money on private tutoring to better the chances of their children. Moreover, the competition often goes against the school's curriculum goals of educating students beyond just mere college admission. Public school teachers fear losing the trust of students and parents due to overwhelming private tutoring. Against this backdrop, people are now questioning the fundamental goals and values of education. What does it mean to be an educated person in Korea? With the overriding focus on exams and test scores, there are concerns as to whether Korean students are equipped with the ethics and skills to live in a globalized 21st century. Second, there are concerns over the quality of the returns from the huge educational and human resource investment. The government and private sector have invested much into education, yet parents and students are dissatisfied with the quality of education. Many experts question whether the money, time, and human resources have been used efficiently in public and private education. Moreover, as Korean industry has become highly sophisticated, the quantity and quality mismatch between the human resource supply and demand is becoming more apparent. Collaboration between universities and industries is scarce. Employers are generally complaining on the quality of college and university students. Also, there is concern on the oversupply of academic degrees in the labor market. Recently, local universities have had difficulty in recruiting due to the shrinking student population caused by demographic changes. On the other hand, more people are needed for the so-called 3D jobs, difficult, dangerous, and dirty jobs, while youth unemployment is rising. The Korean government is tackling these problems in various ways. First, the government is seeking to improve its college entrance procedures and reduce negative effects while preserving positive effects. The government wants to decrease private tutoring while increasing students' cognitive ability, use their individual talent, and make them hard-working through entrance procedures. In this regard, 
universities are free to set the admission criteria. The criteria can be a combination of the results of the scholastic aptitude test and high school records, including extracurricular activities, interviews, and essays. On the other hand, the government has come up with ways to reduce the financial burden of those preparing for selection. They provide courses and programs through the public educational broadcasting system. People can access these aids regardless of their social or economic backgrounds. The government also introduced after-school study programs for the less advantaged to catch up on their studies. Against private tutoring, the government aims to upgrade the quality of schools and regain the people's trust in schools. Aiming high, the Ministry of Education and Human Resources Development have come up with various policies. They improved school facilities, increased teachers' salaries, as well as quality, and reduced the class size for more individualized teaching. In particular, the Korean government is preparing the students for the information technology age. They implemented the use of the high-speed internet in all primary and secondary school classrooms in both urban and rural areas. This will contribute greatly to reducing the digital divide. At the tertiary level, the government launched funding projects such as Brain Korea 21 to cultivate young researchers, particularly in science and technology. There is also the new University for Regional Innovation Project for specialized research in education at local universities. The Korea Research Foundation has more than doubled the research funds for basic sciences, liberal arts, and social studies. Such R&D investments strongly foster collaboration between universities and industries that make Korean industries more competitive. The government wants to attract more foreign students to these high-quality courses and programs in colleges and universities. Backed with experience in setting up a system of formal schooling, the government is taking steps to provide the adult population with a lifetime of learning opportunities. They set up lifelong learning centers throughout the nation. The credit bank system for obtaining degrees through lifelong learning courses is being widely benchmarked and the Learning City Project is noted as a model of cooperation between the school and the community. Finally, Korea's Education Ministry was elevated and enlarged in 2001 into the Ministry of Education and Human Resources Development under the charge of the Deputy Prime Minister. This is a significant move as the government wants to deal with the issue of education, the labor market, and knowledge management at the inter-ministerial level. At the same time, the government is decentralizing the central government to delegate more roles and responsibilities to local education authorities. Over the past 50 years, Korean education has developed remarkably and kept abreast of economic and social changes. In the course of development, it strove hard to respond to the emerging problems at each stage. The world is now taking note of Korea's achievements, challenges, and responses. The World Bank has already been working with the government of Korea to help disseminate your findings to other countries. And we stand ready to deepen this partnership with you. This work is a natural extension of our role in knowledge sharing about what works and what doesn't in development across sectors and regions. A lesson from Korean educational achievement is the changing role of the government at different developmental stages. The government led the initial expansion, even at the expense of quality, to meet the vast demand. Then they focused on quality upgrades, deregulation and coordination. It is important for the government to foresee impending problems, provide resources, design systems and facilitate private initiatives. Korea is now ready to share the knowledge and experiences of its educational development with the world. Koreans are also eager to learn from others' best practices in order to meet the challenges to education in the 21st century.